One of the reasons I believe in revival is because I believe in declension. I believe that churches go down. And you see it in the New Testament. You, you, you see the letter to the Ephesians that a church could take such compressed, high, glorious, mind-blowing theology and the prayers that Paul utters in that letter, the congregation must have been so edified and in love with God and serving God and hungry for God to have uh, received a letter of those dimensions. And yet, uh, maybe Ten years later, Jesus Christ talks about the church at Ephesus and he describes the decline that, that's taken place in that time from such heights that they have abandoned their first love, that they are no longer hot and, and burning like John the Baptist, shining there in Ephesus. Uh, they're no longer crisp and fresh like salad and cold water. But they're lukewarm. A lukewarm declension has happened to that church. And they need exhortation. They need Jesus to come and speak to them and, and, and tell them that they need to be revived, to, to find their first love and do their first works again. Um, so, La Tourette, in his History of Christianity, marks five great epochs in the church, in which then um, blessing is followed by declension the New Testament period, and then the Church Fathers into medievalism, the Reformation, and then the Counter-Reformation, the Puritan period, and then Unitarianism, uh, the evangelical great work in 1859, and then the modernism that comes in, um, in the Victorian people period, from Germany, from the upper classes, from philosophers into the middle class and the working class, the decline that's happened. Uh, and so uh, we are faced with what we see today. Um, now, one would love to see annual times of refreshing, springtime and planting and growth and the sun of righteousness shining on the church um, and uh, oh, a summer time of blessing. Every year you'd love to see that rather than years of drought followed by uh, a time of revival. But the reality is uh, we are confronted now with a century of militant humanism, using God words, but emptying them of the redemptive and regenerative and supernaturalism that those words are used in in, in Scripture. And so um, we are confronted then with um, a need for a spiritual awakening. Um, the, that's the first thing to say why I, I, I believe in it. And then uh, secondly, because of tastes of blessing that I've had. Um, when a congregation remains absolutely silent 
after the benediction and people sit and no one gets out of their seats and no one comes to the door because the, the power of God has been present in, in, in the service. Um, Ted Donnelly did two years at a Reformed Baptist family camp in the USA, in the Carolinas. The first year he gave four messages on hell. And the second time he was there, he gave four messages on heaven. And they came out as a book. And it is a wonderful book. And the third night that he was speaking, the Thursday night that he was speaking, something happened in the congregation. And there was a, an intense work of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been judged that 70 people were converted that night under Ted's ministry. And for the rest of his life, he's been bumping into people, he's been meeting people, and they said, oh, we were converted on that Thursday night. And, you know, it hasn't happened since, it hadn't happened before, and I haven't heard such a, a report of divine blessing happening again anywhere. But it gives me a taste of uh, what can happen, that God can work. It wasn't a cholera epidemic <laughs> that was going on. Uh, there wasn't a, um, an earthquake. Um, uh, there, there, there was no naturalistic explanation for the events that happened then. It, it was God sovereignly blessing his word and his godly servant and the praying that had gone on and the people that had drawn together, serious-minded people who brought their children and uh, members of the family had come and friends had come, prayed for people. It was the ripe e evening for a harvest. And so... Um, that's why, again, I, I believe in revival. And the historic accounts then of uh, Kirkeshots and Daniel Rowland's five harvests in the 20 to 30 years he spent in Llangaethel. Um, there is... Uh, no other way you can describe it than a, a mighty work of God, a great awakening. It's very interesting how Dr. Lloyd Jones had such a high view of a, of a revival. So high that when he experienced um, in Sandfields, in the 1920s, that work of God that we call a revival, Ian Murray calls it a revival in volume one of those two volumes of the life of uh, Lloyd-Jones. Lloyd-Jones never called it a revival. But, you know, one year a hundred people joined the church and uh, every year the church filled, many converted, many from the world steel workers, colliers, working men and women acknowledged Jesus Christ as their God and Saviour. The, the ripples of that in South Wales were um, enormous. And uh, I suppose he was reluctant because one of the marks of revival that um, we, we customarily use to define a great work of God. Uh, uh, firstly, um, uh, 
many people converted, many people converted. And secondly, um, a, a new spirit of service and assurance given to Christians, uh, a confidence and a zeal to labor in the gospel for Jesus Christ. They are there. They pray in the prayer meetings, they teach the Sunday school, they, they're elders in, in the church, they, they support and give to the work of the gospel. Many renewed Christians like that. And thirdly then, a fear of God that comes on a neighborhood. You know, the woman who was the spiritist who is persuaded to come along one Sunday to Sandfields and she sits there and she's conscious that there's a, a, a supernatural, there's a spirit that's present, but a pure spirit. A clean, a holy spirit, not like the spirits that she's been dealing with. The, the fear of God comes upon her and others. And maybe um, the doctor says, Poor Talbot as a whole, Abaravan as a whole, d did not know um, that. And he had such a high view of what. Um, a work of God, an awakening was. That, that would be an indispensable mark for him. But, um, you know, one heard him. And my wife was a, a member there at Westminster Chapel, and she remembers the evenings again when there was a, a hush and no one moved from their seats. And they were conscious that God was there and God had dealt with them that, that evening. And that would be then the marks that I would look for and long for in uh, our yearning for uh, a revival in, in our day.